So we talked about osmotic pressure. We can use osmotic pressure to actually do something useful, reverse osmosis. We can purify water with it. We said that the reason for the pressure was that it built up until the column of water had enough weight and therefore was exerting enough pressure to stop the flow of the water. Well, what happens if we actually increase the pressure on that side past that level? It's going to force the water to flow through the semipermeable membrane the other way. So this is what happens here is on the outside, we have this seawater. This tube is made out of the semi-permeable membrane. And when you put high enough pressure on it, the only thing that can go through is the water molecule. And it will, because that's where it can escape to, it's trying to escape all that extra pressure. It will go through and you can just pull the water out through the tube and it will be pure, or at least a lot more pure than it was. So you end up with a desalination plant using reverse osmosis. In fact, that is what we use to make the water you use in the lab. We will, instead of using distillation, we use reverse osmosis to give you pure water to use. So just a purification process, allowing you to collect the pure solvent leaving behind the particles that were dissolved in it, the solute. What we would like to do with it in the lab, though, is something a little more strange. We can use it to determine molar mass. Because of the way osmotic pressure is, it's easily measured. You can measure the height of that column of water easily. And then you can figure out what the osmotic pressure is from the height of that column of water. And it works on dilute samples, and if you have something that has a large molar mass, it will not take very much to make quite a bit of osmotic pressure. So we are going to try doing one of our little examples. It says I'm making a solution. In this solution, I am dissolving five milligrams Oh, well, there's a mass right there. That's a mass, five milligrams, of a polysaccharide. Poly would be a recurring unit. Well, I don't know how many, but if it's a saccharide, it's going to have C6H12O6 as its pattern. That's what's going to be repeated over and over again. What we don't know is how many poly is. We're expecting this. We know that it's 5.00 milligrams that was dissolved and that it was in enough liquid, so water, so that we made one milliliter. I don't know the molarity of this because I don't know what the molar mass of this is, so I can't figure it out. But I do have some indication here of that it is a concentration. There's a certain amount of the solute and we have a final volume. So in some sense, this is a concentration. It's just not the type that I can use in the formula right now. But what do I know? I know from here it says the osmotic pressure of this non-electrolyte solution. Guess what they just told us when they said that? If they said non-electrolyte, that means I know that I is one. So my pi equals I M R T. They've given me the pressure. So they gave me this. They told me it was a non-electrolyte, so I know that I is one. R is a gas constant. And they told me a temperature. They gave me everything but M. So I can rearrange this formula to isolate M. If I fill those in, I'll be able to figure out what the molarity is. They told me it was 1.91 times 10 to the negative third atmospheres. They have an R here and they have a T. Oh, 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 T. T needs to be in Kelvin, I know that. They said it was 25 degrees Celsius, so I will add the usual 273 to that to turn it into Kelvin. So it's 298 in Kelvin. Okay, so 298 Kelvin. And here I need R. R, 0 
0.8206 liter atmospheres over moles and Kelvin. So you can see the atmospheres are going to disappear. The Kelvin is going to disappear. This mole is under two division signs, so it ends up getting flipped to the top. So I'll have moles per liter. That's a molarity. Run this through the calculator, and you're going to get 7.81 times 10 to the negative fifth moles per liter. So that we know is a concentration. In some sense, five milligrams per one milliliter was also a concentration. If I have five milligrams per one milliliter, you know what I can do? I can cancel out the millis. This would be the same thing as five grams per one liter. And that's a concentration. This is a concentration. I'm going to set the two concentrations equal to each other. Moles per liter. Per liter. Well, that would be per one liter, right? I could just cross these out. And I can say that five grams would be the same thing as 7.81 times 10 to the negative fifth moles. Molar mass is always grams per mole, right? So if I just stack these two up so that I have the grams on the top and the moles on the bottom, I will have it in the right configuration and the calculator will tell me that this is 6.40 times 10 to the fourth and the units are grams per mole, which is the molar mass.